Hey everyone, Jared here back with another Tractor Basics video. In this video, we are going to discuss remote hydraulic outputs. We are going to discuss what they are, why you may need them depending upon what you're doing, and the different variations. So tractor remotes, in their most basic sense, are hydraulic outputs. Most of the time when we're discussing tractors of this size, we're talking about rear remotes. And some larger tractors, specifically usually ones that have front three-point hitches, they can also have front remotes. But remotes are different than third functions, which I will cover in another video later. But for now, we're going to just focus on remotes and specifically rear remotes, since that's what we're going to see most often. So every tractor could be set up and plumbed a little differently, but they're all going to be based upon the same concept. And that concept is you're gonna have a, a valve block that could have only one or multiple valves in it, valve stacks, and hydraulic fluid pressure from your tractor is entering that block and goes through and then returns to the tractor. Now, anytime one of those valves is actuated, the hydraulic pressure is then applied to the outputs of that rear remote setup. My valve assembly sits down underneath my cab and is plumbed into the housing of the tractor. It is then fed via hoses up to these rear blocks. So you can see I, I don't have any valves right here. These are nothing more than blocks holding the couplers. So now that we've covered the basic overview of the plumbing of the remotes, now let's talk about valve types. Valves come in a few different configurations. The most basic and common is going to be a spring return center. That means no matter whether or not you actuate it one way or the other, it's always gonna to want to return to center. So the next type of valve is a detent valve. A detent valve is offered in a couple different fashions and the very first detent valve, we're just gonna call it just a regular detent valve. When that lever is actuated and pushed over the ball detent, it provides hydraulic output and doesn't stop. That can be used for, uh, for running hydraulic implements such as a, a log splitter, something like that. The other type of detent is called a self-canceling detent. And that would be, if you've ever run a log splitter, the valve on top of that is usually one of those. So when you go to retract it, it locks in detents, but then as soon as the cylinder fully retracts and it deadheads and hits uh, enough pressure, then that lever kicks back in the center and cancels itself out. So it act the same way. If I had a, let's say a canceling, self-canceling detent valve hooked up to my top link here, and I pushed it, sucked that in, as soon as that guy got all the way up, instead of continuing to try to apply pressure, it would kick out and cancel itself and self-center. Both self-centering and the detent, regular detent, can be operated just like a regular self-centering by feathering it only so far, making sure you don't go over the detent. The final valve option that's offered is called a float. So what a float does is when you, it'll have a detent, it'll have a position, just like your loader that when you pop over that ball, it will lock into place. So what it basically does is connects the outputs together. So for example, we could think about this blade here, hooks them together and that allows things to move and float. So why, why would you want to float? If you had a top link cylinder that did not have locking valves and had a rotary cutter or a finish mower. So the top link, whether it be a quick hitch or directly to the implement, would float and allow the cutter to pivot independently of the tractor. You could put a float on your side link. You would do that if, uh, let's say you're running a grader scraper or uh, maybe a landscape with wheels, something like that, and you wanted it to follow the contour of the ground independently of the tractor. So that's what a float does. It does nothing but allows 
hydraulics to float just like your loader. So now let's talk about actuation. Up until this point, I've been describing all of this as if they are mechanical valves, which mine are. And a lot of valves, especially factory ones, are built that way. The other way valves can be operated is electronically, electrically, and that's via solenoid. A lot of aftermarket kits you see are built that way. And you can get into some pretty sophisticated electrical solenoid valves and larger tractors that are used in uh, large scale farming, implement stuff like that, where you want some more precise control. In my opinion, and the way I like mine set up is for the most part, I prefer levers. I prefer levers because they give me more finite control. I can really feather my tilt, my top, any angling, anything by feathering the lever, just like you do in a loader. The less you move it, the slower you move it, the less that implement's going to move. Uh, electrically, you have to bump or you know hold it and let go and try to guess where it is. You don't have a whole lot of control. It's on and off with the bumps and you don't have the nice feathering like you do with the lever. Once again, my opinion. So now, why might you want rear remote hydraulics? For me and the reason I wanted them, which we've already discussed a little bit here, is I have a top and tilt cylinder setup. What this allows me to do is control the angle aggressiveness of a cut with a top cylinder. And one thing I really like is when I'm loading equipment on trailer, I can take things such as this blade, my planter, my Harley rake, suck it in, lift it up, and then I'm not dragging it across the ground or the trailer when I'm loading and unloading. The tilt cylinder allows me to set the grade of the implement independently of the tractor. So if the tractor is perfectly horizontal, but I need to cut a crown or I'm cutting a ditch or swale, I can set the implement to do that or vice versa. If I want to level something and the tractor is not level, I can level the implement it and then grade back to flat. So that's why I really like that. Me personally, I love these. Uh, they are an extra cost, obviously, that they're not cheap and you can do it manually with the setup you have. Top links are adjustable, side links are adjustable, but you are out there turning, cranking a lead screw in and out to adjust the length of that link. So I really like my top and tilt setup that I can control hydraulically from inside. So that's one reason why you may want rear remotes. Second reason, and maybe even think about final, is, is implements themselves. So I have here a Woods rear blade that has a tilt cylinder. I also have a Harley rake that has a tilt cylinder. Both of these are going to need a rear remote output. So I have two of these tied up with my top and tilt, and then I have the rear blade tied into my third. If this had power angle, I would either need to unplug one of my cylinders for top and tilt, or I can add on another diverter multiplier and get a fourth output. But you, you can see the complexity of a rear implement can increase the number of rear remotes you may need. So other implements that may come with cylinders uh, that I don't currently own is ditch bank flail mowers. Those will pivot out and then they can adjust angles so they can go down in a ditch and mow down in a ditch or they can go up on a bank like a pond bank. There are side shifting flail mowers. Uh, I have moved a large rotary cutter for somebody that had hydraulic lifted wheels. It was a pull behind, not a three point. Uh, larger planters will have hydraulics often to lift and lower the transport wheels. Uh, there's a uh, log splitter we brought up, but you, know, you can see there's, there's many reasons why you may need hydraulics out of the rear. These just happen to be the reasons why I have, but I find them invaluable. So before we wrap up, we're going to go ahead and fire the tractor up. We'll lift the implement off the ground and we'll adjust some of these so you can see how all of this works. I'm not going to take a shot inside the tractor. 
I have a video of me installing these rear remotes where you can see the entire setup, how this installs, and you can see the functionality when I'm using it for the first time just to do the top and tilt. But, but for now, I just want to lift this up, show you the blade angle, and show you how all of this operates. So I hope that was useful and I hope it was easy to understand and explains any questions you may have about rear remotes. If you do have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. I would also love to hear if you have rear remotes and how you use them if you do have them. If you did find this video useful, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up and then subscribe and hit the bell notifications to be notified of upcoming videos. And as always, have a good rest of your day.